In this video, I'm going to show you how to export your GarageBand iOS projects as individual tracks so that you can import them into other digital audio workstations. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. Now, before we get started here, I am going to show you two different methods for exporting individual files or what we call stem files out of GarageBand iPad or iPhone. There are links down in the description if you want to jump around. The other thing I want to mention is that there's no really quick and simple way to do this. Unfortunately, both methods are kind of workarounds because there is no way to export multiple tracks as individual files directly from GarageBand. We do have to do a little bit of fiddling. So now that that's out of the way, let's dive straight in and show you how to get it done. Now I've chosen a four track project here just to keep things simple, but you can do this with up to 32 tracks here in GarageBand. It will just take you quite a bit longer. You can see I've got some drums here, the virtual drummer, this yellow track. I've then got two virtual instrument tracks and one audio recorder track. And I've used a mixture here because that's going to be important when we show you how to get this done. Let's dive into method number one which is simply to solo each track and export it. Yes, I know, super simple, but it's really the best and most effective way to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo Graham here. I'm going to solo this drummer track. Now, there's a couple of decisions to make before we export. The main one here is whether we want any effects at all on this track. Now, some of your virtual instruments will have effects built in, so there's really no way to remove those. But if you've added in things like compression, echo, reverb, as you can see, here I've got master effects, plugins and EQ, we can turn off or on any of these. You just need to make that call and it really depends on whether you're sending it for someone to mix it or whether you want to have completely dry tracks or whether you want to have a little bit of that reverb and compression on there. I'm going to leave the compression on the drums here, but I am going to turn everything off. So the drums at the moment sound like this. And that's the track that I want to export. So there we go. We've got that one. We've got it soloed there. This is the only one that's going to be there. We then just tap in the top left to go back to our main screen. And now we're going to start exporting this as individual tracks. Now, before we share this file, the first thing I do is actually rename. So I'm going to tap right here on the name there, and I'm going to rename this one. What I normally do is use just the name of the track like that, and then the track number. I'll usually put like 01, in fact, there, because we could have up to 32 tracks here, and then drums. So just so that you're getting into the habit of making sure you get these right, we'll rename the track there. We then need to hit the select button in the top right, tap on that one, and then tap the share button right down here in the bottom left. We want to share it as a song file and we want it to be uncompressed wave file 44.1 kilohertz 24 bit the best quality we can we're going to hit the share button and then we need to hit open in why because there's a bit of a bug in GarageBand in iOS 13 at least if you're in the future maybe that bug's been fixed but we need to open in first so that we can then save out this file directly to our files that is now done we can hit the save to files button here we're going to choose where to put it we'll just put it back in this same folder but you can of course choose anywhere you'd like to save it and we hit save there you go that is done there is that wave file it's grayed out there because we're in garage band we'll just hit done in the top corner if we go over to files though we'll be able to use it i'm going to do one more of these tracks just to show you how this all works and then i'll show you the final result so back into our project file here, we will unsolo the first track, we'll solo the second track, and yep, you guessed it, we're going to do the same thing. We'll check in here to see if there's any plugins, not just the compressor, that one's all good, we're happy with that. We can now do the same thing, we're going to tap in the top left here, and then we're going to tap there to change the name. Once again, we're going to change this one to O2 and bass and yes you've guessed it it's not a super glamorous and fun process but it's pretty simple to do once you get into the swing so we so that the key is solo it name it then export it if you keep to that you're not going to get confused and all your tracks are going to be nicely named so we'll do all of these same moves again here we'll hit the open in there and then we'll wait for this one to export save it to our files 
There you go, it's done. We hit save to files. We save it to our files there and boom, we've got that ready to go. There is our O2 bass and our O1 drums and we can hit done on that one. Now I won't show you the next two in detail, but just in case you were wondering, with this electric piano, the reason I put this track in here is you'll notice it doesn't start playing till bar five and you might think, Pete, is that gonna cause problems if I export just that solo track? Well, no, because GarageBand is smart enough to know that the actual song starts up here and it goes to here. So it's actually going to export the blank space here and then the rest. And that's super important because if you've got different parts that come in and out at different times, you wanna make sure that your tracks are the same length so that they'll all line up when you export them and bring them in to another platform. So we're all done. I have got all four tracks exported here and we're ready to go. So now all we would need to do if we wanted to use these, if we flick over and jump into our files app here, you can see there's our four WAV files and they're all about the same size and they're all gonna be the same length. So just to show you what happens here, if we open the base file, for instance, and we hit play. There you go. If we go over here to that keys file, remember this is the one that started halfway through. If we hit play, nothing there, but if we scroll on through, There we go. Now the thing to keep in mind is that GarageBand does something called auto-normalizing, which is a bit of a pain in the butt. It does mean that it will increase the volume of these tracks. So they are all going to be normalized up to zero dB. So that means when you bring them back into a track, you may need to turn the volume down. And at the end of this video, I'll actually show you bringing these back into GarageBand. But first, let's jump in and show method number two for exporting stems. Now this method requires the use of an app called Audio Share. There's a link down in the description if you wanna pick it up. It's only a few dollars to buy, but you will have to have that app to do this. And what we're going to do this time is actually merge all of our virtual instrument tracks down into audio tracks. And even this one that has multiple parts, we're gonna merge these all into individual audio files within the project. Then what we can do is go into Audio Share and extract out those audio files. It's quite simple to do. Let's show you how to do it now. So we'll firstly select the first track here. We'll tap right on the icon there and then we're gonna tap the merge button here. It's gonna ask us which ones to merge. So you could merge multiple ones together. Say you had some backing vocals and you wanted to stem those out to just one backing vocal file. You can do that or you can do individual tracks like this. We're gonna tap merge in the top right corner. What it's done there is it's merged that track down. You can see there, there is that drum track now. We can follow the same process again. We tap on bass, we hit the merge button here like so. We then tap merge in the top right corner and it's gonna merge that one down there. We then do the same with the keys. Tap on that one, again, come across, hit, whoop, we missed it. <laughs> it, it merged it anyway. Uh, no, it didn't. Tap on the keys, tap there, hit merge. I'm having a few issues with my mouse here. There you go, hit merge and hit the merge button in the top right corner. That's gonna merge down our keys and then finally, we're gonna tap the top one, tap on that one, again, come across and hit merge and then in the top right corner, hit merge and that's gonna merge down. So there you go, we've now got the same things. We've got drums, we've got bass, we've got keys, we've got vocals, but we've got these all in these audio files. Now, what I'd suggest we do before we do the final process over in Audio Share is name these audio files because that's going to make it easier to identify these files over in audio share. Now you may be aware there's two ways to name these. We could name the actual track by tapping here and going to rename and that will name your track over here. That actually doesn't matter for this method because it doesn't use the track names, it uses these file names. So to change these, we tap right here in the file name, tap again, and then if we come up here to rename, see that we're now renaming this part here. So if we remove this and we just type in drums, and hit enter on there. There you go, that one's named drums. I'll go away and name the rest of these and then show you the next step. There we have it, all four tracks are named and ready to go. All we need to do now is come out of here and save out of this project. Now what you'll notice is that we've got a bunch of different versions of this, right? So every time we merge, it creates a duplicate copy of the project in case we wanna go back to those original files. So you don't have to worry too much if you wanna go back and then re-edit, you can see we've kept the original version there. But this version, number four, is the one that we will actually want to go ahead and open up in Audio Share. Let's do that now. 
So let's switch apps again. We'll come over here. This time we'll go into Audio Share. And what we can do is actually import this whole GarageBand project and then scrape out the insides. It's pretty cool. So let's tap on this orange button and go to Pick Files to import the GarageBand file. Now, if you're in the recent here, it'll go straight into your file there or you can browse for it if it's not there. So we're going to tap on this one. It's going to bring in the .band project file. But because the .band project file is just a, a folder of files, we can now expand on this and it will jump in and show us the contents. Ever wanted to know what's inside your GarageBand projects? You're about to find out. So there's all of these different folders. The one we're interested in is the media folder. So let's tap on media and here are all of our tracks. Now, I'll, this is what happens sometimes. So I'm kind of glad it did this. Sometimes it won't actually update those renamed tracks straight away. It's a bit weird, don't ask me why, but these AIF files are actually, you can see there that there's uh, there's one, two, three, four files there. And by the looks of it, this is our drums here. If we hit play, there it is. And we'll come up to this one. This looks like our vocals. When you open your... Yep, and then we've got our keys there because it starts halfway through. And then finally our bass track. And you can see what I mean about it normalizing. It's increased the volume so these waveforms are peaking right up at zero dB. So we will need to turn them down if we use them. But the beauty part is that these are right here, right now. We can now actually export these and we can copy these over directly from inside here to another location so that we can use them. So from here, you've got a couple of options. You can either select the individual files here and use the share option down here, and then you can just save them to your files or wherever you like. Or what I tend to do though, is if you've got a lot of these, is I'll click on the tick box up the top here, and then we'll select all of them. And I'll actually move them out of this project folder into another folder. So if we tap the green button down the bottom here, we can move them. And if we go all the way back here, let's just go to our normal sort of front screen of our library here, tap on the move items. It will take them out of this project so that project file won't work anymore. But remember, we've got the original version. This is just a merged version we created to do this. And then when we go on back, right like so, there they all are. So they pop in there and we can use them. We can copy them however we like. And you can access all of these audio share folders within files. Let me just show you that quickly before we finish up. So again, we'll switch out of there. We'll go back to our files app here. Now, if we go to the audio share files location, here they all are. So we've got all of these project, oh, sorry, all of these audio files, these WAV files here, and we can copy those. We can use them in other apps. We can send them to our Mac or our PC to import into another software package, into another DAW. I've got another complete video where I show this in more detail, which is linked up there and in the description if you want to check that out. But to finish this one, let's just show you if we wanted to move these back into GarageBand, how it will all work. So we'll open up a new song here in GarageBand and we'll just come on across and just go into the audio recorder just so that we can go into our, yeah, we can have monitoring on, into our track view here. And then what we need to do is you can see we've got our loop icon up the top here. We can tap on that one. Uh, we'll just move those files for the time being. And what we can do is actually import them or it's actually brought them in already. So there you go. We've shortcut this process because these are those WAV files that we just put in our GarageBand folder. GarageBand is smart enough to say, you want these in your transfer folder? I say, yes, they're in there. So if we wanted to build our track out from the first method, we could do this. We just simply grab, grab the drums, throw them in there, and then continue on grabbing each each individual track, grab the bass, throw that in there, line these up. And then as I said, you'd want to then adjust your sound so that they're not going to be too loud. And if you play it back on these ones, like so. The one thing I didn't do here was set up the BPM and the time signature. So that's the other thing you would need to do if you were importing something like this. The other thing we can do though is actually import those other tracks. So let's just delete these. We'll just tap and delete those two that we've added in there. If we wanted to bring in those AIF files that we got before, exact same process. So we go to the loop icon in the top right corner. We then go the browse this time because we need to find them and then find where we put those. So the location was our audio share file files and then here's those merge tracks so again we can just bring them in by tapping them and it will come on in in just a moment 
like so. And then we just drag that one on across just like we did before and boom, it's back in there. It's good to go. So either way you go, the first method or the second method, there's pros and cons to both. Neither are super smooth and easy to do, but it is a good way. If you do want to export some of your tracks, if you want to save them out of stems, share them with other people, import them into other software, this is a couple of ways that you can get that done. Hope you found it useful. Two more videos there as well as down in the description if you want more information and I'll see you on the next one.